<laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Guys, we are live with Sissy Jones right now, who looks so rad. Hi, I feel like you should talk like this. Well, sometimes the job requires it, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sissy does so many freaking voices, and we'll get into that. But the, the main ones that we'd like to highlight today are Delilah in Firewatch, which is huge. Lilith in the Owl House, so excited about that animation. Nora in Call of the Sea. Gladiatrix in an upcoming ARC animated series, which has a huge amount of celebrities in, including Sissy Jones. And yours, Bryce, in Life is Strange. Welcome, Sissy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So how did you discover that you liked, like, at three years old or seven or whatever, that you, like, liked this and it was something that you could maybe sort of try to pursue? Well, I remember when I was, like, six, I was talking to my dad and I was like, I think I want to be an actress. And my dad was like, no, you don't. You want to be, like, a, an accountant. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, I didn't really get it. And then... um when I got older, I was like, man, The Simpsons looks like it's awesome. Like, I wish I just could be like, hey, I'm a Hollywood person and I'm going to be on your cartoon show. Um, but I didn't know how to do it. And then uh, I heard Nancy Cartwright one time talking on the radio about The Simpsons movie and voiceover. And she started talking about a school nearby where I lived. And so I started taking classes and um, was able to, uh, like, dive in head first because I was working in the Silicon Valley. I was like... A business schmuck i like i don't have an acting degree i have a business degree <laughs> wait 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 so what what that that always pfft. like <laughs> one thing is eric bowser was drawing and talks to himself as he draws but you were doing business like what were you doing more specifically yeah so i graduated with a degree in business and spanish and uh i was living in the silicon valley um, I, I started working for a venture capital firm and then i went to one of their startup companies and uh I was just like, I, I, I started a company, I was the fourth person there and it grew, uh, I think now it's like 4,000 people. Um, but I was just doing all the things. Like I was wearing 18 hats and I was working 120 hours a week and like, I hated my fucking life. You know, like I, I've said a thousand times, if anybody's heard an interview with me before, like if you, if I, if I found something in my life and it just feels like I keep running up against a brick wall, um, it's, I feel like it's like somebody's grand way of telling me like, you're on the wrong path. So that's kind of when I back up and find a different route. And then when I find the right route, it just kind of comes together like, like, like a zipper. So do you mind if I ask how old you were when you, when you switched this? Because so many, including my older sister, who's about to be 40, you know, she's always like, oh, may, I want to change my career. Maybe it's too late to do that. And I'm like, it's never too late. Like I was 30. I was 30, which is, you know, like you grow up, you, you drink the Kool-Aid, you go to the school and you meet the partner and you get the marriage and then you have the 2.5 kids in the white picket fence and like, that's it. Thanks. Thanks for playing. Here's your handbook. Um, so there was really no precedent for that, especially not in my world. Um, you know, I'm from, I'm from Idaho. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, you know, blue collar state. There's not a lot of like art. <laughs> Well, there is now, but there wasn't. Um, and so it was a, it was a, it was scary. It was like jumping without a parachute. Um, but, uh, you know, I landed on my feet. I have a really supportive partner and um, we were able to make a go of it and move to LA, which has been 10 years. And I can't, I like, I'm still wrapping my head around the fact that it's been 10 years. Well, so uh, I first started voiceover in San Francisco. So I got signed uh, with a local agent there and my second audition was uh, Katya for The Walking Dead, which I ended up booking, um, which was unreal, like incredible opportunity, incredible property be, to be involved with. And um, I started booking pretty regularly in San Francisco. And I was like, what? I got this. I'm good. You know, I'm going to move to L.A. And, tear it. and then I moved to L.A. and I didn't book for a year. <laughs> and I was like, what have I done? <laughs> you know, just terror. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, you know, I was so, so needy and so desperate because, you know, as actors, we get in that like valley of like, I'm not good enough and nobody loves me. And um, my agent, Dean Panero, um, who was at A3 and is now uh, has his own agency, called me one day and he was like, dude, you're so desperate to book. I smell it in your slate. If I smell it, they smell it. And no one hires desperation. Knock it off. Aww, isn't That's that That's incredible. Sweet. That's incredible. So, um, so I broke out of that. I, like I started going to like more coaching and like 
finding my own self, like yoga and meditation and stuff. Wait, and what, then, is that, what does a desperate Sissy Jones slate sound like? Sissy Jones. <laughs> I mean, it was just this like horrible, dramatic. And uh, and then I booked the voice of Ralph's and I and I had Ralph's for eight years, the grocery store. So I was going to say, wreck it, Ralph's? <laughs> what, what does Ralph's spot sound like in Sissy's voice? Ralph's is like, mm, stop by Ralph's this week for grapes, only two ninety nine a pound. <laughs> ah, you know, I've auditioned for those and I'm never going to book them because I can't. But I always go, ha, oh, you got to make it sound friendly, but not too announcery, but not too whatever. Like... That's amazing. Ralph's is good for the bank account. What yeah. was the, the, what filled your soul? Uh, well, then I had a couple of really good commercial runs. And then I did, uh, I started booking more in games. Um, so I booked a bunch of like additional characters, like gen pop voices for video games and stuff like that. And just started making my way into the community. So um, I was doing a bunch of that, uh, a lot of commercials. And then uh, Firewatch happened five years ago this year actually five years ago next month that was a huge thing um because it was it was an indie i mean it it was made by eight people and uh and it came out with like massive expectations and and i remember the night before it came out i was so nauseous and i just like thought i was gonna barf (laughs) really Yes, because I'd never been a lead. But then it came out and, and it really struck a chord with a lot of people. And, and um, you know, some people loved it. Some people hated it. But <laughs> but it was a really pivotal moment for me. You have, um, it says 76 video game credits. Holy shit. There's a lot that aren't listed. But, I, yeah. that, that's why I says it's that. That's why I says. That's why I said it says. I know there are more that like are just voices you've done that they haven't put. Like, are you are you recording every day? That's insane. Sometimes, sometimes not. Um, you know, there are weeks that I have no sessions, two sessions, and there are weeks that I have 10 sessions. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out how to balance it all. And, you know, listen, the other thing is I only do voiceover, right? I don't do on camera. I focus solely on VO um, and I'm, I'm able to, to really hone in on it and do my thing. So what is one of your favorite uh, video game characters that you felt... It's really rad to do because I mean we, we do the go I need help over here grenade incoming go 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 like those are generic and not as fun like is there a character that sticks out that's particularly special? I mean, listen, like Delilah is just like a super amped up version of me. Like she's just like a crossword doing tequila drinking <laughs> smart ass. <laughs> And I love her. Um, I also really enjoyed, I just, the, there's a game that came out in December called Call of the Sea. And I really enjoyed doing that one. It's totally different than than anything I've done video game wise. Um, but it was really fun. But I like, I had to sing for it, which I've never sung for public consumption unless I was drunk at karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> public consumption, that's a good one. I only sing in my shower. Yeah, it, it's, I, I feel really lucky, you know, just with with video games and then in animation um you know i've done some really fun characters obviously lilith in owl house is is one of my all-time favorites but i also did another show with fred tattashore a couple years ago called little big awesome and i play an anthropomorphic nail file she her name is fresha and she runs the inconvenience store oh my god she just has this like um like one day they were like, how long can you hold that? And I was like, how long do you need me to hold it? Oh my God. <laughs> AJ wants to know about your role in Destiny 2 because he's an insane fan. Yeah, Commander Sloan. What? Yeah, that's a big one, right? Yeah, she was fun. Um, she's just a badass. She's got these like gigantic um, shoulder pads. <laughs> pretty sure she could give most linebackers a run for their money um yes. but yeah that was a really fun you know thing to be a part of too back to owl house uh that's a show on disney mm-hmm. and is that um one of your first like not first first, first big animated yeah. shows yeah and um how, what what's that like you go into disney weekly is it bi- bi-monthly like what's the not not in pandemic. I know it's like a difficult like. Yeah, it's uh, it was you know every couple of months, just whenever they were getting the, the scripts done, and then you know once you you record the first part for the the script, then they have you back in a couple months later to chase the animation. So in case there's any like efforts that you have to like, you see the character running, then you have to match it to the to the, animation and stuff like that. Um, 
it's just it's a super fun project to be a part of. It's the first um, uh, bisexual character in Disney history. Um, the lead, not my character, but the lead character, Luce. Um, and she's, I want to say Dominican, yeah. um, the lead, the lead character, um, which I just super, super love. And, uh, I play the, the sister of, um, Wendy Malick, who I grew up like loving. I loved her on shows on HBO and stuff as a kid. And it's weird now because I play her older sister. <laughs> I would love to hear some of your fun voices. If you, if you have them, um, well, um, I really like doing little kids, but I'm still working on like, you know, like, um, like booking them and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it, uh, I'm a big fan of Fresha with the like, oh my God. um, but Lilith is, uh, she's very composed and, um, she thinks of herself as royalty, even though she isn't. And so she talks with a very, like, I'm so much better than you, um, uh, voice which I love <laughs> do you would you say you do a lot more uh deep deeper voice characters or it kind of varies all over I mean obviously there's an announcer voice for Ralphs and stuff like that but yeah I'm way more comfortable down here for sure um whenever something calls for like high energy and peppy I'm like oh god <laughs> I don't yeah. wanna don't make me uh, I tried out voices in not in my head out loud yes for an audition where I'm like oh I love this song and this the whole time and then you're like that hurt me in just two seconds. Can I do four hours of that? I don't think so. So, you know. I will tell you, when you do that, is that a kitty draw cup? and the cup. Wait, what? Like, so this, the the voice straw that I was showing you, yeah. Yeah. it also comes with this like silicone cup and you put a straw halfway through it. And if it's something that's going to hurt, you're like, do it in here a couple of times. And it resets your, your larynx. So, cause if, if you do something that's like a little bit weird, it'll, pop them up and make them uneven this forces air back down your throat to reset your cords and like i had a crazy crazy effort session uh, a couple of months ago they told me it wasn't going to be heavy effort so they booked me for four hours which they're only supposed to do too um but it was very heavy for four hours and this is the only reason i made it through wow mind blown completely i do warm up for the little straw to kind of warm it up and open it up and do 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 yeah but I have had, I mean, I have fun voices that sometimes just aren't, aren't as sustainable, but how can you not do them? They're fun, you know? Well, and that's like, uh, working with her helped me hone my little kid voice. Cause I used to do little kids like this every time. Cause I thought that's what they wanted, but that, that never, like my agent was like, that doesn't sound real. So I realized that you have to open up your throat a little bit. So like, instead, instead of getting like all up here, you have to like, you know, like make sure your throat's open and not closing everything off. And it totally changes the sound. And yes, Jeff, it did also help me with my singing. Um, so if you have to sing a song, you sing it all the way through here. And my name is Jack, dude, I'm a caddy, come on. And then you can sing it like regularly. You, said you don't sing, but you had to sing for a thing. And then someone commented that Yuri Lowenthal sings with you. Yes, yes. We sing a duet in uh, Call of the Sea. And um uh, we actually learned like harmony for the very end of it and everything it was, and, and recorded from our own studios, had to memorize each other's timing and then they mashed it up for the finished product. Would you tell me about Life is Strange? Because they would like to know. Yes, Life is Strange is this beautiful uh, indie game that came out um, shortly after Firewatch, maybe. Um, anyway, it's a it's a, a really, really cool story about um a teenage girl who has the ability to um, go back in time and change events. And uh, she is played by a girl named Hannah Tell. And one of her best friends in the, in the game is a girl named Chloe, um, who is uh, played by Ashley Birch, who is the best fucking human on God's green earth. Um, I want to suggest her to come on here. I absolutely would. I asked for her every day because she's in Valorant, a game that I'm also in, and it's the most impossible thing to do. So guys, that is Viper. We will work on getting her. <laughs> she's very busy, so. She is, she's incredible. Um, but she's, uh, so it, it, I, I don't wanna give too much away, but it, it's a really beautifully done story about relationships and what they mean. Um, I end up playing, I play Ashley's mom, <laughs> which is amazing. Cause she's like, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, like first, the first time I met her, I was like, hey, I'm your mom. She was like, <laughs> hey, whack job. It's really sweet. And it, it's not like 
pew 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 so you don't have to have like a lot of skills to play it um i have not because i don't have the time um but it's great sissy thank you for joining us you um you're so freaking talented it's a joy to to get to chat and hang and get to know you better likewise and i hope all these awesome followers give you a follow um to be up with everything you're doing guys keep booming and booping